Hi friends, it's Becky, and I am only doing easy projects this week. So this week's project is going to be just some stringing of some of these special fun and funky beads that came in the Soft Flex Badlands design kit. Um, it's their mystery design kit. They come up with a new one every month. They're not a subscription, but they release a new one every month, and then you have that month to create with and enter their design contest on their Facebook group, and it's a lot of fun and a lot of inspiration. So most of the colors in that design kit are like turquoise and copper, but there were a few that had this dark blue and some bronze aspects to it. So I thought I would grab one of these really cool um, like wrapped beads like this as a focal, use these um, kind of rivoli shape lentil beads, these dangles, and a couple of the lighter like cream colored beads and all of these other dark brown beads, and then these ones that have kind of a bronze, um, matte bronze finish on them for that. And we're just gonna do, um, just one of the ways that you can do an easy stringing is to string just half of it on beading wire. And I'm gonna be using this antique brass color beading wire for that. And then connect it to some chain around the back of it. And it's just really easy, and it means that you don't have to keep adding beads to it or have a whole bunch of stuff, you can just have your, you know, bigger kind of pay attention to me beads right at the center and then just have a chain behind you um, as you do that. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, for tools, I'm going to be opening and closing jump rings with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to be cutting my um, beading wire and my chain with these and I'm going to be crimping my crimp beads with my magical crimper. Um, and I'm adding from my stash this brass chain, these jump rings, lobster clasp, and I've got these really pretty, it's a really pretty blue. These are just some 80 seed beads. I thought I might throw them in there somewhere in the stringing. I haven't figured out where though. So let's get started figuring out where we're going to go from here. And I think I want these guys to be on the end. Um, like that with this one. And I might just pop one of these Eidos in here just to help space this out a little bit. And then the cylinder beads like that. And another one of these. Whatever I do on one side of my necklace, I'm going to want to do on the other. So both of these and that and this. I put them in order over here. Alright, and then another cylinder bead. And I think this... I really love this bead. It's got like all of these little like tile things and then it's wrapped with some wire. It's just a really cool bead. So we're going to have those. And I think I love these little Eidos between them. It gives a little bit more space for those. All right, now I've got that. And then I need this to end up on here. But I might... Hold on. Let me figure out where I want these dangles to dangle and whether I need to put to put these on yet. So we've got three of these on each side. Alright, so here I am at the point where I am going to want to get some jump rings on my dangles. So I might just do all of my jump rings right now with y'all to get these on here so that I can string them without having to stop for that. So I'm going to hold one end of my jump ring and I'm just going to use my crimper to hold that. You can use another pair of pliers if you want. And then I'm just going to wiggle this until it meets in the middle because some of them when they twist like that they're not they're not going to meet back up. You know, let's just do a different one. That one wasn't a good jump ring. Sometimes you can tell. 
There you go. And I just twisted it open like that. And now I'm going to just thread it through this hole in this little dangle. And then close it back up. Make sure it meets. And now I can string it on here from that. I'm just going to put another 8-0 on the other side of it. And then one of these frosty light colored beads. And there we go, we've got it kind of dangling between the two of them. All right, let me get these jump rings on the rest of these. I'm gonna do all six of them real quick. So this is a little more complicated than just a simple stringing thing because we are attaching jump rings to our dangles. But I don't think it's too complicated. It should be easy to follow. Oh, and I was going to say, I mentioned uh, this bead, this big blue one. That actually didn't come in the Badlands kit. It was one of the ones that was in the California, it was either in the California Dreaming kit or in the California Dreaming um, bead strand. But it's the same color of blue, so I thought I'd just pull it over in here. This is that Noxima blue color, cobalt blue. great aunt collected glass this color, like glassware. She had like entire um, display cabinets full of them. They're really pretty. All right, I'm almost done. Doesn't take that long, but you know, it's going to take us a little bit of time. Close that up. I think I can open that up. I think this is a good Friday night activity. Or a good weekend necklace. Yeah, the, um, I think the 8-0s are giving enough space between these beads that they're not going to crowd these dangles. So I'm really glad I thought to pull them out and have them. And for my, my focal, it's just going to be this bead. Just this bead right on the strand. I'm not going to add a bunch of extra stuff to it. Um, and I'm just about to where that is going to be. I'm going to put this cylinder bead right there. And then another 8 -o. This big chonker right there in the middle. And I'm just going to go do that same thing on the other side. With all of the same beads. Hold on, friend. 
Where's that other Ada? There it is. Nope, oh, well, those Ados got swallowed up by that. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. It seems it has a fairly big hole. So I'm going to string on a dingle, an Ado, one of these frosty beads, then an Ado, a dingle, an Ado, and another frosty bead. Then an Edo, a Dingle, an Edo, and next comes our metal, our wire wrapped bead. There's so many different textures in this. I sort of love this a lot because of the textures. old cylinder bead. I always think of bullets when I see these. I don't know why. Like shotgun shells. That's what they remind me of. Weird, I know. And I didn't do this on this side, but I'm going to do it on this side, and I will fix it before I put a crimp on that side, but I am putting another bead between that one and this one. See, I didn't do it on this side, and I did do it on this side, and I like the way that that looks a little bit better. So this is going to be the front of my necklace. Let me get one end of my chain attached to my wire by putting on a crimp going through one of the links on this chain. It's right there on the end. And I'm going to bend this back and crimp it. And my favorite way of crimping is using the um, magical crimpers. Um, if you prefer a different style of crimping, absolutely do that. I like this because I never have to use a crimp cover. So I'm just going to take this 2x2 two two crimp tube. It only works with 2x2 two two crimp tubes. And on point .018 or 019 wire, which this soft flex medium is. So I'm going to take this concavity on the inside of this. Let's see. And I'm going to center the crimp right in there, make sure it's good and centered on both sides, and then give it a little squish. And when you do that, it will squish down just the corners of the crimp. And if you turn it at a right angle and give it another squish, and then, you know, like a 70 degree angle, and then maybe a 30 degree angle, just go all the way around. Maybe a 27 degree angle, I don't know. 80 degrees? Go crazy with it. But once you do that, it'll smooth out all those rough edges and leave you with a little ball of crimp. It is quite useful to have. And I'm just gonna grab this wire cutter and snip off my excess wire from that end. Push all of my little bead friends next to it. And now I need to figure out how much chain I need to cut off from here. So I'm going to pick this up and hold it up with one end around my neck of the chain and see where it meets at what length. I'm just holding it up with the beading wire and chain meeting each other on the other side. Yep, that's the spot. So this is the spot right here that I'm going to want to cut it. Now that I know how long the chain needs to be. And then I'm going to need to cut this chain in half. Um, but I am also, at this point, going to cut my wire so that that is not pulling on things or getting in the way. 
I don't want my beads to come off before I forget though. I am definitely going to put that one bead on. Remember I said I would fix it. Um, all right. Now I'm going to put this bead stopper on here just while I get this chain cut in half. And I'm going to do that by grabbing a wire or something, anything that you can put the two ends of your chain links on. And just kind of dangling it and it looks like there is a single link right there that I can cut and that will make this cut that chain in half Whoop. there we go that's easier than measuring things and using math all that fun stuff is just measure it against how long you want it to be um, with that chain and then cut whatever chain you you say this is how long it's going to be off and it'll be just a little bit longer than that once you've got the jump rings and the clasp on but it's not enough to really impact it all right so this end I'm going to crimp onto this chain I'm going to put the crimp on my cord go through this loop Sorry, this link on my chain. What are you doing, friend? There we go. And then bend it back on itself. Make sure I'm in the camera shot. I think I'm going to need to grab a different um, crimp because this one seems to have a little bit of a small hole. So let me grab a different crimp real quick. It wasn't letting me put that wire back through. Sometimes you find that on copper crimps. They have pretty thick walls, um, but they are very strong crimps once they are crumped. And yes, I am going to state that that is a word. <laughs> I'm going to crimp my crumped your crimped this past tense. Come on, buddy, just go back through the crimp. That's all you need to do. Oh, there it is. Got it going. to do is adjust this with some pliers this way we can scooch that down where I want it to be and then I can pull that through perfect uh -huh. sometimes you just need to Use your pliers. And once everything is crimped, I can cut off my excess. Everything will be fine. Alright. This was supposed to be quick and easy. 
but you know what? Sometimes it might be helpful to watch somebody else struggle with things that you have also struggled with, like making a crimp fit in your work. All right, so I've got two jump rings left, two more things that I need to attach, and one of those is going to be attaching this lobster clasp, I'm just verifying it works, to that end of that chain. On the other side, we'll just get a, a jump ring so that when I'm attaching things, I can clasp onto the jump ring and not try to fit it through these tiny chain links. That would be silly. So let's go through a link, add our lobster clasp, close that up, make sure it's good and closed. And then we will add this to the other side. There we go, we've got some fancy beads on the bottom. We've got a simple chain along the back. And it'll be all impactful around the face area and not so bulky around the back of the neck. I'm not super great with bulky necklaces around my back of my neck. It doesn't always feel good to me. Sometimes I like something else. All right, so there we go. A simple bead and chain necklace using the Badlands Softlex Design Kit. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I will talk with you later. Bye for now.